Good morning, everyone. First of all, apologies for my shy voice. Uh, I hope you'll be able to understand me just fine. Um, <clears throat> today, I want to talk to you about networking and specifically networking at Bootcamp. Beyond Hello Networking Board. Now, naturally, that title I have to start with. Hello. Um, before we go any further, I'd like to ask a couple of yes no questions so that we can make sure that everyone is happy this early in the morning. Um, how many of you have gone to a previous work camp and made a connection through networking that has later benefited you in some way? Okay, yep, that's about what I expected. <coughs> And that's exactly why we're here today, to talk about networking. I'm hoping that next year when we meet at WordCamp Sophia, or when we meet at another WordCamp, uh, I'll be able to ask you the same question, and hopefully everyone will be able to say yes. Um, and another question, how many of you believe that networking is beneficial? Okay, that's good. Yeah, in general, networking can help you get a new job or advance you further in your career. I want to make a note here uh, by telling a personal story about um, an aspect of networking and that it's very unpredictable in its results, but hopefully that will still inspire you to do it regardless. So it was 2004. Our first kid was born and my wife said that we should be responsible adults and we should start tracking our expenses and our incomes so that we can manage our finances better. Now what I heard was, can you make me something in WordPress to track our expenses? And I said, hold my beer. Um, <clears throat> at that time, the WordPress REST API plugin, if anyone remembers that, was just picking up speed and everyone were, was talking about it and everyone was getting it. So, I thought to myself, what a better opportunity to try it out than a project where, you know, I don't have anything to use. So I created a simple theme that incorporated some features to keep track of expenses and incomes and so on. And I was very excited. I was happy about it. I decided to share what I did with people on a Facebook group, and I posted about it somewhere. And later on, someone contacted me on Facebook and he asked me some more questions about what I did. And I explained, I sent him the code, and everything was well. About a year later, he reached out to me again, and he said, hey, I remember talking to you about WordPress, and I see that you have a company now. Would you be interested in working with us to do some WordPress development for us? And I said, yeah, sure. And a couple months into that, we started working on their um, SaaS platform, and helping evolve. And this turned out to be one of our best partnerships in our company. And it all started with me just willing to share my information, you know, being excited about it. Um, so what I want you to take away from this is, when I went to post that on Facebook, I didn't went to the idea of, oh, I really hope this is gonna bring me some clients and make me money. I went to share with the idea of, you know, I'm excited about this, I wanna share. And Accidentally, that turned into a great partnership. So what I'm trying to say is, results from networking are super unpredictable. However, if you don't do any networking at all, then you're not gonna get any results whatsoever. So, at least try. Okay, let's talk about the specific benefits of networking at work. I'm guessing that you're all thinking, well, what's so special about networking at work in specific? Well, how is it different than networking online or at a meetup or other conferences? I'll give you my top three reasons as to why networking at work is special. Number one, you can find clients and employers at work camp. So, the fact that you're meeting them at a work camp means that they are invested in the community, they're interested, and they're already sold on WordPress. You don't have to do 
you just and you don't have to convince them that you know WordPress can be your platform. And <coughs> um, you know because of that they are also more likely to be involved in other ways. They might uh, sponsor some of their employees to work on WordPress, WordPress Core, and which is all great benefits. On the other side, you being at a WordCamp means that you are actively trying to improve your skills and you are also trying to build the community, which can be seen as great benefits from potential employers. Um, I know that I, as an employer, um, I'm always looking to make connections when potential friends, uh, potential employees. And whether, you know, even if we don't have a uh, position at the moment, I'm still happy to talk to anyone that would be interested in working in the future. And then when a position actually opens, um, and I met you at a work camp, then your, your application will probably go to the top of the list. Number two, you can make general connections. No, it's not about work. It's not, networking is not just about work and making money and all that. It's about finding a place for yourself in the community. So by being at a work camp, you can make friends um, that understand your work and understand your problems and the difficulties you're facing. And that can help with your work-life balance um, and it can lower burnout, uh, which is something that we discuss here. Uh, I'm sure all of you have tried at some point talking about your work to someone that is not technical and they just sit there like, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And you know, being able to talk about it with someone that's actually interested in it feels good. So it can also reduce the imposter syndrome because you can get a better understanding of the struggles and skills of those around you. <coughs> you know, sometimes we might feel like we don't know or we're not good enough or something like that. However, being able to see um, other people and see that they struggle with the same things as well is very, very helpful in that, in that respect. And also, you can create a network for yourself where you can refer um, your own plans when for some reason you cannot take, take them on, whether it's because you're too busy or it's something that's out of your scope. You should always try to be helpful to your clients even if you cannot do exactly what they want. So, you know, a client that you send to someone that will get their job done will remember you with good. Whereas if you just say, you know, I can't help you, bye, um, they will not remember you with as good. So, it's, it's very crucial to build that network so you can send people that way. The same goes, the same goes in reverse as well. So, you know, people will start sending you referrals your way when they cannot take on the work uh, that the client wants. Um, like some of these referrals can come a long time after work camp. Uh, for example, I had referrals come like around a year after I met someone at uh, work camp. Again, unpredictability of networking, it's a fun thing. Um, another example, one of our current employees got referred to us from someone that I met uh, because of work. And he sent him our way and it turned out to be a good fit. So that was very good. Um, and finally, when you have a network of people that are skilled and experienced, you can ask them questions and you can, you know, when you need help with something, you have someone to turn to and ask for help. Number three, you can increase your confidence when approaching new people. <coughs> now, I don't know how many people here have anxiety when talking to new people. Um, if you have it, I have it still, but way less. And WordCamp is a great way to help you cope with that because WordCamps are a very safe space uh, thanks to the great code of conduct and you know, all the attendees are 
super awesome and everyone is relaxed, you can approach people and talk to them without worrying about things. Um, also, at work camps, there's nothing on the line. So, you know, it's not like you're trying to necessarily get a sale. So, you can just talk to people and relax. And that's, that feels good. And you should not worry about making mistakes because people usually try to remember the positive things. So unless you're like, a really, really bad person, then people won't remember the mistakes they make. And also, people are here to network too, so that helps the networking process. And if you wonder how to start a conversation with someone, uh, just go up to them and say something along the lines of, Hey, are you involved in WordPress? And that will kick off the conversation and you can uh, take it from there. So why aren't people networking? Every time I go to work camp and I see people come and don't network and they hang out with their friends, uh, they don't talk to anyone new and some people even skip that for It's strange, but I get it. Um, so why aren't people taking advantage of the incredible networking opportunity? Well, these are three reasons, um, and we'll talk about each one of them. So if you see WordCamp as company bonding camp, then you can do a couple of things to um, help yourself network. <coughs> you should break off from your friends or coworkers. No, it sounds difficult, but there's ways that you can do it more gently. Um, so just find a balance, what works for you. Um, you should set aside the time during the day to be with the people that you know and to hang out you know, by yourself. So for example, you can hang out with your friends at lunch, but then at the coffee breaks, go somewhere else, talk to someone new. Um, at lectures, try to sit to someone you don't know, at like half of the lectures they attend, and you know, see if a conversation happens. If you're too shy or you have the imposter syndrome, there's a couple of things that you can, you can do to help with that. You can start by approaching the sponsor booths. Uh, WordCamps have great sponsors, and pretty much all of them that I've seen are always eager to start a conversation uh, whether it's to talk about their product or service or the game that they're running or, you know, just in general to talk about stuff. <coughs> so, approaching the sponsor groups, that's the best way to start. Um, people will try to lead the conversation there and so you won't have to have, do as much of the work. Um, you should come up with questions to ask ahead of time. You know, just think about what can I ask someone new? Whether it's how they're involved with WordPress or something else, just prepare some of these, get a handful of them ready so you can put them out of your head and keep the conversation going. Don't try to overstimulate yourself. Um, you know, if, if you feel exhausted, if you feel anxious, uh, you know, stop networking, take a break. It's best to have you know, good connections that are genuine, that are, you know, not forced, than to have some forced networking conversations. And you should realize that the majority of people are feeling similar things. So, it said that 70% of people will experience the imposter syndrome at one point or another in their career. And so, it's not just you that feels the pain. Um, so go out, talk about it, and that's one way to help um, you know, yourself and others move forward. If you underestimate the benefits, well, you can set goals before coming to WordCamp. <coughs> you should think about what you want to get out of WordCamp every time you go. You should not go just because it's a local conference um, or because your employer bought you a ticket. You know, think about what kind of connections you want to make. 
and um, for example, do you want to meet people that live near you, or do you want to be, meet people that live abroad? You can do either of those for both, or y your goal can be com something completely different. Just think about it and make it, keep it in your head. Now, uh, we'll talk about three uh, WordCamp networking mistakes. Number one, trying to sell your services. I'm guessing everyone has had that experience of someone intruding their personal space, whether it's a phone call or ringing on the doorbell, and trying to sell them a service that they don't need or want. Uh, and I'm guessing that most of you don't like that. So don't be that person. Don't start the conversation by saying, hey, I can make you a new work site or hey, I can improve your SEO. Um, it can come naturally in the conversation later on, but this should not be your opening line. Because people will shut down, um, or they'll get defensive, and it's not gonna go anywhere. So. Um, <coughs> uh, most people come here to build the community, and to make future connections, and not because they have an immediate position. However, some WordCamps do have job boards, uh, which is a great thing. And if you're looking to get someone to do something for you, or you're looking to find a job, start there. Um, I'll actually advise you to uh, contact the organizers in some way before the WordCamp, to ask, you know, hey, is there gonna be a job board at WordCamp? Um, and if enough people show interest, then I'm pretty sure they'll make one happen. Number two, trying to talk with everyone. And again, it's not a great thing because you should try and have deep and authentic connections with everyone instead of just trying to go for all the people. You know, you're not gonna meet everyone personally at WordCamp. Um, well, at least on the scale of WordCamp Sophia because there's like 500 attendees. So instead of spending two minutes to talking to everyone you meet, try and spend like 10, 15 minutes having an actual, honest, good conversation with someone, and that way they're going to actually remember you afterward, you know, and that will help you potentially in the future. Number three, not listening to others. So, you know, you might be nervous, uh, so you're trying to think of what you say next, and you don't actually pay attention to what people are talking to you, um, or you want to sell your services like I said before, um, so you do all the talking. Both, the, both of those are not on the extremes, and they're not uh, ideal. So what you should do is you should try to ask questions to the person that you're talking to, and actively listen to their answer. And that way you know, they'll, they'll see that you're actually interested in the conversation, and so they'll be more likely to be interested in the conversation as well. And if the conversation isn't going well, just, you know, excuse yourself and go on. Uh, sometimes it's not a great fit and it just doesn't work out and it's fine. Again, it's okay to take breaks. Uh, you don't have to network all the time. Just if you start feeling it's too much, take a break, it's fine. Um, go talk to your friends, colleagues, um, and you can get back to networking later or you can be done for the day. Just follow, follow what you feel like, and that will be a good, uh, good indicator. Now, <coughs> before we leave, I wanna leave you with three tips that you can take out of this room and uh, take on to the rest of the work from today, so you can hopefully network with more people. Number one, use the hallway track. So for those who, that don't know, uh, the hallway track is what we call the hallway outside. Uh, you know, it's, it's not an official track, obviously, but this is where all the sponsors are and um, people hang out in between lectures. And if you're not interested in a lecture, you can hang out there. And usually there's way less people, maybe, you know, in the case of WordCamp Sophia, like, you know, excluding the Sponsor booths, I would say maybe there's 10, 15 people. 
Um, so if you are shy or you have anxiety, that's a great time to start networking because there's going to be less people. You're going to be able to have a conversation because it's much quieter and there's not all of this noise. Um, and yeah, just easier. Um, yeah, and some work camps do have specific networking uh, events. Uh, for example, work camp Europe had uh, tribe meetups, which were organized by specific interests. Uh, smaller work camps, like work camps to Vienna, obviously don't have that. So again, using the hallway track is a good way to engage with people. Number two, have a way to record information. Um, no, an audio recorder, preferably. Uh, so you can you can either you either need to have a place to keep business cards or have a notebook or something on your phone. And once you're done done talking to someone, uh, you should you know take a few take a minute to write down what you talked about and you know what you found interesting about this person, how you may connect in the future, and that will help you. You know, if that person reaches out back to you or you need help, you will know exactly what you talked about with him or her. Or her. Um, and number three, you should not be afraid to share some stuff about yourself. Now, whether that's personal or professional, um, again, not salesy, um, you should think of interesting facts about yourself that will help people remember you. For example, <coughs> I like to say that I'm a wannabe par paraglider. Um, hopefully someday I'll be able to say that I am a paraglider, but for now, that's interesting enough. Um, and be ready to explain what you do and how that relates to WordPress, because people will most likely, will most likely ask you that question. Um, with that being said, my name is Nicole Nicole, and I'm the lead developer and owner of Pack Development. And you can reach out to me on Twitter, Nicole of TMW. Um, thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, I would love to answer them.
specifically fruitful pet interaction with the gun. Mm-hmm. How did you approach it? How did you do it? Uh, there was that one that I told the story about. That was, uh, yeah, super random. Uh, I just posted about it. The person talked to me about it. I was frank. I was open. Uh, you know, I didn't, at that time, I didn't try to sell my services or anything. I just talked about what he asked me. And that left an impression on him, I'm guessing. And eventually that led to a great opportunity for us. Uh, I have a question. How and when did you get involved with WordPress? So, <coughs> right after graduating from high school, um, about half a year later, I started working at a local company uh, that luckily for me was offering actual training because obviously I didn't have any experience specific to web development beyond you know, HTML. Uh, so, they were working with WordPress and I joined their WordPress team and that was back in 2010 and I've been with WordPress ever since.